Hello, listeners. Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network. So everyone is talking about AI these days, but not enough people are taking the time to unpack how AI will impact the future of higher education. And that's why we launched the Generation AI podcast, co-hosted by Artis Kadu, CEO of Element 451, and JC Bonilla, Chief Data Officer at Vayner Media. Artis and JC have worked on large language models for nearly two decades and have remarkable technical knowledge around how they work and how generative AI will impact the future of higher ed. Generation AI isn't just about understanding artificial intelligence. It's about being part of the AI revolution in education. Tune in, get informed, and be inspired to innovate in your educational space with the power of artificial intelligence. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or just search Generation AI wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Talking Tactics, a podcast that gets you results. Each episode features a single tactic implemented with limited resources that moved the needle in enrollment in some way. I'm your host, Day Kibbils, Strategy Director at Ology, a marketing and branding agency for education. Join me every other week for discussions with some of the most clever folks in admissions and enrollment marketing, doing the work day to day, just like you. Talking Tactics is a part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at Enrollify.org or check out some of my personal favorites linked in the show notes below. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Check them out at element451.com. Oh, hi, friends. Day here. Welcome to another episode of Talking Tactics, where we talk tactics. Today, you'll meet Dr. Courtney Skiles from the Trinity Valley Community College in Athens, Texas. Here's today's tactic. Courtney's team is getting one in five students to apply after a visit to their school by simply dressing down to be more relatable. Courtney is the Director of Recruiting and Admissions at Trinity Valley Community College. She found her passion for higher ed as a student there in 2016 and has relentlessly pursued her higher ed career and education ever since. She's a proud Gen Z leader who recently earned her doctorate, which is why she's Dr. Courtney Skiles to me, in higher education leadership, and her goal is to devote her career to promoting higher ed to underserved populations. Courtney, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Hey, we're so glad to have you. Um, I I have been following you online and you are definitely someone to watch. So, so, all right. So we're going to talk about this cool tactic of yours as someone who oversees recruitment and admissions. You kind of noticed you had to make a bit of a change in how you approach students at their school. So can you take us back to the situation that inspired this tactic that you're going to share with us today? Yeah. So a a little bit of background to TVCC and kind of where we found ourselves building this tactic or coming up with this. Um, We're a rural community college in rural East Texas. We primarily are situated in an agriculture-based industry, and we found ourselves, my entire department, I was not the director at the time, but director down brand new in our recruiting roles. We had had some changes, uh, some decisions made by our administration to change around some departments and do some different stuff. And so all of us brand new in October of 2019. Oh, we all know what's coming. We all know what's coming. Yeah, it was not an easy journey, but um, we did have a little bit of a fall there of, of, of a fall recruiting cycle. And we had to kind of figure some stuff out because none of us had been recruiting before. None of us knew what that meant. We were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants, so to speak. And so we were brand new to college fairs. We were brand new to being in classrooms and we were just trying to figure it out. And our director at the time, he was so good at just talking to students. And that was something that I really struggled with. Oh, Hey, what's your name? Tell me, you know, tell me all this stuff. And I'm going to try to sell you this college. That's, 
that's not easy. Uh, us Gen Z students are scary little individuals who <laughs> live in this virtual world. And um, when you're trying to do door-to-door sales for college to Gen Z students in a classroom, it just doesn't go very well. It's not an easy feat. I know. I agree with you. I think some people have that gene that they can just do that. I am I am not that either. It's the hardest thing. It <laughs> is. Yeah. It ha- it's a learned skill for yeah. sure. But he was so just natural about just being able to strike up conversations. And, you know, when you're going into a high school and you're going in, especially to talk to rural students or just students in general, they don't know how to talk about college. They don't know what it means. They're very unfamiliar, especially in our landscape that we're situated in. College isn't the norm. College is it's just not everyone's first choice. I mean, I think I ran a statistic the other day that over I want to say over 55% of our applicants report that they're first generation college students. So more often than not, students aren't talking about colleges with their families. So you can't just go up to a student and start having conversations about college because they don't know how to engage in that. And so he was he always used to tell us the thing that people can talk about the most is themselves. That's the one topic that they're experts about. So he would go up and just start having conversations. And his hook line was always shoes. He would go up to kids that were wearing really cool shoes and he'd be like, man, I love your shoes. You know, I was looking at these online. Tell me about what you like. And then these kids would just open up and start having conversations about the sneakers they were wearing. And so we were like, hmm, this seems to really work. They can have long conversations about this. Kids like what they're wearing. When you're in high school, you know, how you're dressing is a huge part of your identity. It's a big deal. And so we were knocking doors open to have conversations with students because we were asking them about themselves and what they were wearing. And so we took this back and eventually um, it just kind of evolved into we would go to these college fairs and there you would go and you would dress, you know, wear slacks and a polo and go looking like a college recruiter and there would be big universities with people in suits or like nice dresses and they were wearing heels and they, you know, they had their name tags and everything like that. And it just felt very stuffy, you know, especially for our students who were ag based, you know, we're a bag ag based industry. A lot of the students that come to TVCC are in welding or they're in cosmetology or they want to go into the medical field. You don't see people in those industries wearing that type of outfit. It, became apparent to us when we, when me and my fellow recruiters were kind of developing our recruiting plan and its formality and then, you know, hitting COVID and having to, having all this time to game plan about what we're going to do when we can get back into schools. We needed to look as much like a student as possible because that's how they were going to relate to us. And so um, that director of recruiting at the time, he eventually left and went on to a different industry. And I found myself as, a, I think I was 22 or 23 and in a brand new world of recruiting post-pandemic in with a brand new department. We had only really had a couple of months of real recruiting before the pandemic. And we were like, you know what? Mm-hmm throw the polos away. We're wearing jeans and t-shirts and we're getting cool shoes and we're walking into these schools and we're going to just look like they do. And I swear the first couple of months being back in schools, the way we dressed, people thought we were students <laughs> and, and and employees of these high schools, administrators, they would look at us and be like, where's your hall pass? And we were like, oh, sorry, we're TVCC recruiters. So we knew we blended in. And when you can blend in with high schoolers as a college representative, You're in. They probably think you're the coolest in the world. I mean. We noticed they were so much more comfortable with us, talking to us, opening up to us because we looked like them. And all of a sudden they were seeing who represented the college as an identifiable or relatable figure in their community. And it it really busted the door, like open doors for us to be able to step in and, and to assimilate with their culture and make them feel so comfortable that now we're seeing a lot of these students want to talk to us. They want to come up to us. They want to engage and have conversations and be a part of TBCC because they see themselves here. They see themselves in us. They see themselves literally in your outfits. So I'm so curious. Um, I have so many questions here, but in particular is like, what shoes? Did everybody <laughs> have the same shoes? Did you let your recruiters pick uh, oh, yeah. the cool shoes that they wore? Was it like the shoes had to be an accent? <laughs> I want to know. 
it's it's very interesting because all I've had multiple recruiters come through throughout the past couple of years. Everyone has their own style, and so I like for them to you know express themselves. And I also work with a team of eighteen student recruiters, and they're called mm-hmm. Redbird leaders. And my Redbirds go in the same way as we do. And they are, you know, just out of high school themselves. So they are even more identifiable and relatable than we are. But um, my shoe of choice are um, Air Forces. I have custom colored Air Forces oh, that have my yeah. initials on the back. And they're like, they're really cool colors. They're not necessarily school colors, but they're pretty eye catching. So students, when they see them, they're like, oh, hey, like, I like your shoes. Nice. Uh, I have a lot of just red tennis shoes or my recruiters. Like I wear red rain boots when it's raining and like Mm -hmm. bright, bright red rain boots. And those are always get a lot of conversations started. I have um, people who wear checkered vans or they'll wear um, just all sorts of stuff. But we always try to either have them be like really, really bright colors, eye catching colors or their school colors. And they're just whatever is the most popular shoe at the time. Um, this is the coolest tactic I've ever heard. Also, a reason to go shopping. Like, oh, all the time. This yeah. Very important, uh, you know, shoe trend on TikTok. This is a business expense. <laughs> yeah, for sure. A tax write off. <laughs> I do not spend college money on my shoe wardrobe. I will just throw that out there. Um, but I, I think I had a recruiter um, at one point, and I swear, probably every other paycheck once a month he was like I found these really cool shoes on Nike I'm getting them and then he would be wearing them in the classroom the next week like it just became such a thing that our shoes were such a part of it and I mean we would wear jeans and I would go in with like ripped jeans or you know cargo pants or just we we looked nice obviously but it looked enough like a high school student that they were like oh this person isn't the stuffy adult coming to talk to me about financial aid this is someone that I can talk to And so I would walk up in there with my Nike Air Forces and a TVCC t-shirt and my jeans. And I would like do my entire presentation with my sugar-free Red Bull in my hand. And then afterwards, I'd be like, do y'all have any questions? And they like hands everywhere, the whole room. Was that different than before? Like, did you, did you get to experience that contrast? Oh, for sure. I think those first three months, you know, October, November, December really was our our recruiting cycle in 2019 that we got before everything closed down. Um, we would do our whole presentation, talk about financial aid, talk about programs, scholarships, clubs, sports, you know, you name it. And we'd get to the end and we'd be like, does anyone have any questions? Crickets. Or we, then we started playing. We tried this tactic for a while where we were like, we're going to popcorn now where we're just going to be like, where are you going to college? What do you want to do? And just popcorn around the room to try to generate conversation. And all of the, almost every single time a student would raise their hand or we'd call on them and be like, where are you going to school? And they'd be like, oh, well, I'm going to this college on the road, or I've never heard of TBCC before. Just, you know, kind of dismissive comments. You know, we weren't really an option. And now we go in and it's like, do you have this program? Do you have this? This is my financial situation. This is my home life. Can I live in the dorms? I don't have money. Like, the types of conversations that students are having with us now are a night and day contrast from the reception that we were getting before. And I really think it's because we've been a consistently present for years now, but also because we have built this brand of, Oh, it's TVCC. Like they're chill. We, we can be like them. We can, you know, they're, we can talk to them. They're just like us. So and I, I mean, I can imagine there's there's studies done on this too, like how difficult it is for students to ask questions, especially when they don't know what to ask, right? So just you, by you and your team kind of literally making yourselves relatable, it's just removing that barrier where they might not feel silly about asking what's actually on their mind, right? Because it almost feels like a peer-to-peer conversation, so there's no weird lines of authority or intimidation. So I, I love this. Hey there, it's Mallory, Chief Strategist of Enrollify. Higher Ed is facing a leadership crisis. The demands on today's college and university leaders are skyrocketing, and talent is leaving the industry at an unprecedented rate. New leaders like you are emerging, but no one is getting the proper training to be successful. Well, Enrollify is here to change that. 
Our new course, Lessons in Leadership, taught by Dr. Carrie Phillips, will prepare you to be a confident, empathetic, and effective leader. From systems thinking to adaptive leadership, building culture to handling difficult decisions, this comprehensive online course is perfect for new and aspiring leaders. Don't wait. The course starts September 9th, and for a lucky group of 26 students, we have the option to add interactive sessions with Dr. Phillips for personalized guidance. Visit enrollify.org to learn more. Um, in addition to the shoes and the cool jeans, did you also change like the type of presentation or like the type of content you're sharing with them in the schools? You know, the content really doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, year to year, you know, you have different rules and regulations. So things come out of, you know, your, your, it's Texas. So things are always changing here, but things come out. And so you have to, you know, the conversations you have about financial aid have to be a little different where, you know, unfortunately, a year ago, we had to remove a sports program. And so now we have to, when students ask about it, we have to know how to share information accurately and appropriately about the types of programs that we offer. I think it's just all in your approach to these students. You're wanting them to learn the information and retain it. It's so easy for these students when they live in a digital world where it is fast content, where they can scroll. And I think there's studies that say if you don't get hooked, if you can't hook them within the first four to five seconds, of them viewing the content, they won't stay. So to have students, Gen Z students, you know, moving into eventually we're going to have Gen Alpha students in the classroom where that is the norm for them is retaining information in five seconds or less, having to sit through a 45 minute presentation and keep their attention. The way that you approach the information that you're giving is very important And because I am a part of that generation, I am the oldest part of that generation, but the people that I employ, my recruiters are my age or younger, most of the time, we all consume information the same way. So something that we've done is the first sentence has to be either a joke or funny or super interesting or something they never knew before. Because those are the types of hooks that are going to get them and keep them locked in for the next whatever, however many minutes of content that I have to dump at them. And so we go in and we start off by sharing our stories and about going to college and what it was like for us and why we chose TVCC, just right off the bat being very transparent and very vulnerable with our stories. Because if they relate to us and any aspect of why we chose to go to college or our struggles with going to college, then they're more likely to listen to us because we have rapport. You know, they, again, they see physically. It's that and the shoes. It's that and the shoes, yeah. (laughs) So you can get them and they're like, oh, these these people look sick. And then they're like, oh man, like my life is just like theirs. It's a double win, you know, knock it out of the park. And so I would go in and be like, you know, I grew up in a military family. My parents are divorced. We had no money for me to go to college. I'm first generation. I didn't know where I was going. I felt really dumb about going to a community college. I didn't make good grades. I didn't like high school. All of these things, at least one student in the classroom is going to relate to some aspect of my life. And so once they relate to me, they see them, they see me, I'm not a threat in a tux, you know, (laughs) they're, they're there and they, they really engage for the rest of the conversation and the actual content that we share is more. Did you know what it means to be core complete? Do you know what it means to transfer to university? Did you know how much it costs to go to TVCC? Here's all the ways that you can relieve the financial burden. Do you have any questions? And then by the time we get to the questions, they're so comfortable with us that they're just like, oh, you know, everything flying around. Um, And we walk around the classroom and we talk to them one-on-one at their desks. If they feel open enough to ask it in front of the whole classroom, we answer it in front of them. But yeah. I mean, we really try to make it as comfortable as possible for students. It sounds like you're really succeeding at that. And I I just, I love how it's it's so thoughtful, everything from how you're delivering the the presentation to going to their own space, their own desk, to literally the shoes that you're wearing. So um, have you encountered any challenges along the way? I know that you had a, you know, you were a new leader, you had a new team. So there wasn't necessarily like someone that, 
was pushing back, but was there, was there anyone who questioned this tactic when you first implemented it? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely. I think being in higher education, this is an extremely long standing institution and higher education itself was built for doctors, for lawyers, for politicians. And so I think there's been this centuries long stigma that if you went to a university, if you went to college, that you were smarter, or, you know, if you have a degree, you're more likely to get a job. So there's this level of prestige to going to college. And coming in a as a very young director, as someone who came into my role without years of experience behind me, having a very young staff and going into high schools and not looking like the stereotypical college recruiter. I think there were a lot of people who maybe just questioned, like, do we take them seriously? Is this a serious tactic? Is this going to work? Are we just out there, you know, goofing off? And while we do like to have fun and we are a bunch of goobers, it's, it's very intentional and it is a very successful tactic for us. And so you have to kind of battle, you know, you might see us walking around campus and we're not in business casual. That doesn't mean we're not getting our work done. Or we walk into a classroom or we walk into an office and meet a superintendent or a principal. And it's like, I know where these people coming to and saying, hi, let me in the classroom with your students. And we don't look like we're a a professional entity. I think there are some raised eyebrows, but more often than not, after the teachers, after the counselors see us interact and see us in the classroom or in an auditorium or in a gym or wherever we are with students. They're like, these TVCC people are great. We get so many counselors who want to, who ask us for help. And more often than not, it's after they've seen us interacting. And so I think there is always going to be that barrier when you try to implement this and all of a sudden you have people in t-shirts and, you know, dunks walking in trying to be like, let me talk to your entire senior class. You're going to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Are you legit? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we are. We are. We're trying to um, eliminate that sense of um, distance between distance. you. And yeah, the, the, the unachievable aspect of college that I think a lot of people associate with it, with it, especially the way that you present yourself, come, overcoming that stigma has really helped us in the long run. And I think one of the things that's really interesting about it is for a college like yours, like TVCC, this makes so much sense, right? Like this is this is exactly who you're for and how you are. I can imagine there are some universities and colleges out there that whose brand is is a little bit of that distance, right? Like that's part of their ethos. And so maybe this tactic wouldn't quite work for them and that's fine too. But I think so many colleges claim to have this really this relatability and to want to open up access and et cetera, et cetera, that this is such a simple way to physically do that, like physically represent that goal, you know? There's a lot of literature coming out right now about where does the value of a college degree mm-hmm. in these days? You know, the economy is not good. People don't have the money to just be throwing it at a college degree. You have so much out there with social media and becoming influencers and Mm -hmm. college isn't necessarily the go-to anymore to be successful in life. There's so many other avenues that people in my generation and younger are going to be pursuing. So I think even for more selective universities, if you're struggling with undergraduate recruitment, how are you presenting yourself? Because we aren't the standard anymore. College is college degrees are not the standard for success. So how do you market yourself? How do you present yourself to that generation when they're looking at you and being like, I can't afford that. I don't want that debt. I don't have the money. And I could go do this and make $5,000 by making an Instagram post. You know, why, why would I choose? And so you really have to start thinking out of the box of what am I going to do to keep this generation coming back? And, um, it's not easy, but I think definitely the more this, this social media generation is so attached to brand and do people buy into their brand? Do they buy into yours? And what is your brand and who the people who physically represent your brand, what do they look like? And do those undergraduate student populations buy into that brand? I mean, it's a consumer market. And so you really have to step back and consider. That's such an important kind of observation in the sense that like I think about retail right and 
the people you have at the store or, you know, Disney employees or, you know, they, everything it's not, you don't just train them with what they say, but it's how they look and how they act. And I don't think in higher ed, people are as thoughtful about like, how is the brand being represented by the people that are representing it? You know, um, I'm thinking too, like, you know, tour guides on campus, right. Um, yes, we give a lot of thought to the training and what they say and what the route is. And maybe sometimes they have like, you know, they're, they're students, they wear what they wear, but are we really, are we making them relatable? Are we kind of shortening that distance? And I just love this idea of doing it right in their school. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all right. Did, we did the same thing with our tour guides too. I, yeah. I don't like it when they look like state farm employees. Right. It's like, they need to <laughs> put the just, khakis away. <laughs> just please just don't. Yeah. All right. So talk to us about results. I know you mentioned the conversations have changed. Questions have increased. At the beginning, I kind of dropped this big stat. One in five students convert. What else have you noticed as a result of this tactic? Right. Well, I think the big one, the one in five, we've looked at every classroom presentation that we do. One in five students that we talk to applies. That's amazing. It's an incredible stat. Is it 100% tied to the fact that I have cool shoes on? Probably not. But I do think that the thoughtfulness behind our presentation of ourselves does lend a huge, you know, hand towards that statistic being possible. Um, I know that this has been my first, I think I'm on a year and a half maybe of my, of being director in some form or fashion. I was interim for a little bit. And this has been our first semester this last spring. And, you know, recruiting is always a lagging indicator. You know, if you look at KPIs, it's always a lagging. You pretty much have to give it a year before you'll see a result. So a year and a half of me being director and we're up 8% enrollment. So things are ticking upwards. And I, I wish that I could like, maybe in a survey, I'll put in there like on a scale of one to five, how cool were my shoes today? And maybe that would give us more direct <laughs> data, but um, I really think it's it's a lot of anecdotal relationships and the rapport that we have with students and yeah. um, being able to walk into a classroom and just have a conversation and have them feel like TVCC, like college itself is possible because of the way we represent ourselves has really been impactful in that regard. Yeah. And I mean, I, th I think it really shows how you're making this effort to understand them and put, put literally put yourself in their shoes, you know, and clearly something there is working. I do think you should have a little survey at the end of your of your school visit presentations uh, and then start it with that shoe question. And then they'll be more likely to answer the other questions, too. But then we'll know for sure if it's the shoes. <laughs> Courtney, thank you so much for coming on Talking Tactics and sharing this awesome tactic with everyone. I really hope to see a bunch of recruiters really upping their shoe game after this. Yeah, I, I really challenge you guys. You know, that Nike custom, Nike U, I think. It's oh, yeah. Check it yeah. out. Got some cool <laughs> things. <laughs> all right, listeners, you all heard it. It's time to go shopping. Joking aside, this is really a fantastic tactic for those students who are not used to imagining themselves at college. Uh, Courtney and her team have really thoughtfully ar articulated why this matters. Uh, all jo jokes aside, uh, they the students need role models in their lives, and we can be that for them if they can't find them in their own situation. So be relatable. Let them see the possibilities they don't see themselves. Courtney, if folks want to find you online, where can they look for you? I am on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram and pretty much wherever else you consume social media content. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm usually at Courtney Lou 56. All right. Wonderful. We're all going to go look and see if we find pictures of those shoes. <laughs> and thank you everyone for listening today. Go out there and keep walking the walk and talking the tactics. The Talking Tactics Podcast is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month, and we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions pros find their next big idea 
and feature a selection of the industry's bests as your hosts, like Jamie Hunt, Alison Tercio, Jenny Lee Fowler, Jeremy Tears, and so many of your other favorite leaders in higher ed too. And Rollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Check them out at element451.com.